Hey, how's it going? This is Melinda and welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about records that I'm in serious consideration of letting go out of the collection. And I thought it would be something I want to share with you because I think a lot of the reasons of why I'm changing my mind about having these records are things you can relate to uh, as a collector, uh, as someone who loves to listen to music. And, you know, I think we've all been there to some degree. We buy a record or a box set, we love it, we enjoy it for a while, and then after a while, something happens, whether it's a reissue that comes along or, or just something that we think's better, and we decide to let go of certain things. So I'm gonna be naming some reasons and showing some examples of why I'm letting go of some of records, or I'm at least in consideration for doing so, and I'm gonna do an all-out rant on one particular group of records that I have bought, I've spent way too much money on when you add it all up for what I have gotten in return. So let's go ahead and start with that rant. Let's just start right out off the, uh, and I'm going to be talking about the band U2. I just recently saw them at the Sphere. I know that not everybody's a big U2 fan, but a lot of people are, and their vinyl records, uh, let's just show here, here's a two LP uh, version of the Joshua Tree. I got it out of a Joshua Tree Deluxe box set, uh, but they sold it separately. You didn't have to buy the box set to have it. It was on gold vinyl, which I, I personally don't love metallic vinyl. But, you know, I would say this doesn't sound that bad. It's okay. Here, let me show you the gatefold because uh, I thought that was a very cool picture. I have an original too, and it's not horrible. That's probably where U2 ends for me when it comes to decent sounding records. And trust me, I have done the legwork. Uh, I have an original of U2's The Unforgettable Fire, and it sounds very forgettable. I also spent the money on buying the limited edition wine vinyl, only to be very disappointed again. Uh, my favorite U2 song is Pride in the Name of Love. Uh, I also love Vertigo. That's one of my favorites too. But uh, yeah, I just, it doesn't, I'd rather listen to it in my car. I think there's more dynamics when I'm listening into it on my car than when it went, rather than putting it on my turntable on vinyl. And that is a shame. It shouldn't be that way. These were from the early 80s, recorded analog. Why do they not sound so good? I, I will say, you guys, if I am mistaken and there are great sounding pressings of them and they've just been shh, over my head, please enlighten me. But I just don't think these U2 records sound good at all. I don't want to listen to them. I've got an, a, an Octung Baby and it's just so flat and it's such a good record. Here's another one. This is the 2008... Uh, U2 War. It's cut by Bernie Grunman. Someone else mastered it, but it's from a very high quality place. And I have an early, or you know, not an, er, an original, but a very, very early pressing of it too. They neither one live up to what I think the potential should be. So I've spent a decent amount of money on U2 records and I don't want to listen to them. I'd rather just stream it. Oh my goodness. Yes, I said it. Or maybe the CDs even sound better. I said that too. I'm not getting what I want out of vinyl when it comes to the band U2. Uh, if there is a company out there and there's any hope of putting these out on audiophile, you know, Joshua Tree, yes, I'd probably pay the 100 to $150 for a great audiophile version of that. The rest of them, you know, maybe make an audiophile pressing 45 RPM for 60 bucks, something like that. I would be all in on that if it can be improved on. Maybe it can't. Maybe they were recorded very poorly or maybe I'm just missing the boat. Let me know. U2 makes me mad uh, when it comes to vinyl and I'm seriously thinking I might just let some of these go because I'm not grabbing them. I'm not listening to them. I don't even really want them necessarily because they're so disappointing. Uh, so let me know what you think of U2 and vinyl and enlighten me if I'm wrong. Now this next is a box set by a band I dearly love. I just don't get the money out of it that I thought I would. Uh, and I'm talking about the zombies. It's called In the Beginning 
five LP box set. And it's on colored vinyl, so it's really fun. But here's the deal. I just don't find I listen to the records out of this box set because I have other copies that sound a little bit better. I'm not saying that this box set sounds bad. Um, I just think I have a better copy of this that sounds really good. Here's another one of the records that came out of this box set. I don't have another of this, so that's part of my argument of why I might hang on to it. I have an original of this album. Uh, this is on white vinyl, but I mean, my original sounds absolutely amazing. Uh, and so that's another reason I don't find I play this one as much because if I'm gonna listen to the record, I want the best sounding record possible to sit down and enjoy. Uh, again, here's another record that came in this. That was on red vinyl, I believe. I don't know. Here's an example of Odyssey and Oracle. I have an original date one. I have a second pressing. They both beat this. I'm not saying this sounds horrible. It's just not as good as the originals, uh, but it's fun. It's on this really cool colored vinyl. It is my favorite album of all time. That's why I fell for this box set. Um, and it wasn't that expensive. Having said that, it takes up room on the shelf. Do I really need to have all of these records that I already own or just don't listen to enough to warrant keeping this box set? That's the question. I don't really know. Uh, here's another uh, example of a couple of records that I probably need to get rid of. And for me, this is the easiest of all. This is probably even a no-brainer. Um, I have this 33 RPM Analog Productions version of Ballads, and the reason why I can easily let go of this is I now have the UHQR. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I think it sounds really great. I always thought this sounded good too, but I have a little catch-all when it comes to some of these records, and this one in particular. My daughter is a big jazz person. She loves jazz music. She will be thrilled to get this 33 RPM version, and I just keep the UHQR. I know that in some cases uh, it's a good argument to keep both. That way if you want to listen to the 33 RPM version, you have it. Uh, if you want to listen to the 45 RPM, you have it. But I don't know. I'm kind of in when it comes to jazz. I just tend to grab the best sounding version of a jazz record possible and play it. Uh, so I don't know that I need that. And also with my daughter being into it, why not give her my other copy? Same goes for Getz Gilberto. This is a 33 RPM analog productions version. Today, I'm actually supposed to be receiving that MPEX one step that's coming out that everybody has been raving about. I will give it a listen as soon as it gets delivered. Uh, but uh, if that one is as promising as everyone says, my daughter will benefit from getting this 33 RPM version uh, from Analog Productions of Getz Gelberto. This is definitely a jazz record she needs to have in the collection. And I'm more than happy to send things her way because in the end, <laughs> she's going to get them anyway, you know? So let's move on to the next one. This is Bob Dylan, the original mono recordings box set. I'm just kidding, you guys. I'm not getting rid of this. I absolutely love it. Uh, this is something my husband dared me to do. Uh, when I talked about records, I was thinking about letting go of out of the collection. He said, oh, good. Get rid of all those Bob Dylan records and you'll have plenty of space because I have a lot of Bob Dylan. Nope. This one's not going anywhere. I hope it gets another repress because it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I just did that one as a joke. Let's move on. Uh, the next records I'm going to show are ones that... Uh, it's not that I really just need to get rid of them. I'm thinking about cashing in on something that's going on with these records. I am talking about Taylor Swift. This is a Record Store Day exclusive. I think these came out in 2018. They're hand numbered. And I bought these just thinking I might want a Taylor Swift record. It was just an impulse buy. And I bought several of them. Well, they're now worth... $500. So I paid $35 for it, now worth $500, or it's not really worth $500, but they're selling for $500. Big difference in my opinion. Uh, and it's only because they are on different colored vinyl. You know, I don't know if that really makes them that special, but for some reason, when you're a Taylor Swift fan, it does at the moment. So I watched a video that Mike Esposito from his channel, The Ingroove Made, where he said, 
he's hanging on to these Taylor Swift records. He sees these Taylor Swift fans the way we see Beatles fans nowadays. Those old records now go for big bucks. The Beatles are highly collectible. Um, there are some records that are worth an absolute fortune. And he thinks that in the future, these Taylor Swift records will do the same thing. Uh, that's a gamble. I'm not really sure. No one really knows. Um, I just know that right now I paid $35 for these records and I could get $500 for each one of them. And I have Speak Now. This was a Black Friday version. It came out the year after the ones I just showed did on a smoky vinyl. I also have a, 40, a little 45 that's still sealed that came out a couple of years ago that sells for $200 now. I also have this one of Red. It's on clear vinyl. So I could sell all of these records. They're selling between $500, some of them as much as $600 each for something I paid $35 for. Here's the, the thing I struggle with. I have talked about on my channel over and over again. I hate the secondhand market. I just, I just really don't like people who uh, buy something for $10 and then want the next person to pay them $500 for it. That's an, uh, I know that's an exaggerated example, but I've said things like that and I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be the person that does that. So that's probably why I may just do what Mike from the Ingroove is doing and just hang on to him. Uh, best case scenario, my daughter will benefit if in fact these records do continue to climb in value and these young Taylor Swift records long for these special versions of these records. Uh, having said that, I want to give you a heads up. Uh, I went to a record store a few weeks ago and I came across one of these and it was only $50 in the bin and I was kind of shocked. So I did a little bit more research. Okay, so mine is a genuine record store day release. It was on clear vinyl. That is the only way the record store day release came out. So beware. I think the one I looked at was a black vinyl version, which got me thinking, no, it was clear vinyl. It was not on black vinyl. And I'm pretty sure that's what I saw that day. I looked at this and anyway, I came to the conclusion definitively that it is an unofficial pressing. Some people call it counterfeit. The nice word people like to use now, unofficial. But I mean, I, I kind of lean towards counterfeit because it had the same sticker that said Black Friday on it. It was very misleading in my opinion. So if you are searching for this record, just know the true Record Store Day record was on clear vinyl, not black. And there is a black vinyl version out there and it's not real. It's not legit. Um, this record store I was at, the reason why it puzzled me and why I looked into it a little more for $50 for one, I knew this, they, they're very fair with their prices, but they know what things cost. They would have caught that this was an expensive record. They would have known. So that's why I thought, hmm, why did they ask just $50 for it? And upon further looks, I realized it was not the official record store day pressing. So just beware, buyer beware on that. Now let's go ahead and move on to a, a band I truly, truly love. And I have this amazing go-to record now, this Van Halen One Step by Mobile Fidelity. I've given my review on it. I love it. It's incredible. So, you know, when you have a go-to record of something like that, do you really need the 2009 remastering? Now, I realize it came from the DCC Metalwork, making it a little more special. Uh, but I also have a Japanese pressing. I have an original that's upstairs that I failed to get, so I apologize. I also have the Chris Bellman box set of those David Lee Roth records um, that I, I bought too. So I have so many copies of the original debut album by Van Halen. And the thing is, you saw how many copies of that I have. I have that many copies of every single one of the David Lee Roth records. I don't need 
that many versions of the same record. I think if you take all of those and a couple of the Sammy Hagar records, I have just as many of the uh, first two Sammy Hagar era records as well. They would take up a whole shelf on just excessive uh, records, the same thing over and over and over again. And in honest, honesty, I'm probably only going to pull the one step out and occasionally, and I don't know what scenario it would be, but the Chris Bellman version, you know, so I really am thinking I only need that Chris Bellman box set and the MoFi's as they come out, as long as they all hold up and sound as good as the debut. Uh, the Van Halen 2 by Mobile Fidelity is coming out soon, so I'll be able to see how that sounds. How many, even though it's my favorite band, how many copies of that record do I need? So I am seriously thinking I need to let some of those go. Now, I want to show something that was given to me by David Bianco. His channel is Safe and Sound Texas Audio Excursion. He's a really sweet guy. He's been so kind to me and he sent this amazing thing my way. It's Van Halen. Now, um, it's just something he saw in a record store to, that he uh, saw and picked up for me as a gift. What I plan on doing with this, and I hope to show it to you when I have the free time to actually do this. I'm going to use this I'm going to sew it onto the back of a jean jacket. I'm going to do some sewing. I might even do, um, you can do like an iron-on transfer type of thing with this and put it on the back of a jacket. I've never owned a dedicated Van Halen jean jacket. I think it would be really cool and I love this. So thank you so much to David and I'm going to leave a link below so that you can uh, check out Dave Bianco, uh, Safe and Sound Texas Audio Excursion on uh, your so you can watch his videos and give him a sub he's a really good guy and thank you so much David now I'm going to show you one more record and this is a doozy it's not a record it's a box set I should say and uh, okay so this is something that's very nostalgic so that's where it's like oh, should I let go of it I'm going to give you a reason why I probably should let go of it and give you a reason why some for somebody that I just can't let go so oh it's heavy okay and it looks pretty rough. I, I understand. Look at that. It's, it's pretty rough. But this is that Japanese version of the Beatles box set. You all are probably more familiar with that beautiful royal blue UK version that came out. Um, it's, uh, you know, the British box set. It probably came out in the late 70s, early 80s. This is the Japanese version. The Obi is long gone. That is my first box set where I had all of the... Beatles records, you know, first starting out. I found that, I think I paid $60 for it, which is a steal when you think they were all in mint condition. The records, there wasn't a scratch on them. They really basically look unplayed. Yes, the box looks rough. It holds very dear memories. I can still remember getting that home and taking all of the records out. It had been stored in a barn. There was straw on the records, not on the records themselves, but on the album covers like Revolver. There was, I saw little pieces of straw and hay and I cleaned them all up and played them. They're very nice copies of these records, but since then I have bought a lot of Beatles records and I don't really find I play these as well. They don't measure up in some cases. So I've thought about many times letting go of that Beatles box set. One, it's kind of nostalgic, so it's kind of like, uh, that was the first Beatles box I ever had. And I, I just remember the excitement of having it and finding it and being able to pay such a good price for it. But that's an argument for cashing in, selling it for a little more and actually getting a little more than I even paid. But here is the deal when it comes to the Beatles. We are not guaranteed. There's actually a pretty good chance that we will never get the analog tapes um, with stereo. You know, we've got the mono box set and we have the stereo box set that came out in about 2009 or so, but those are digital. These were for pure analog and these might be some of the last times we ever get something that's taken from the analog tapes. From now on, we just might get that digital file over and over again. There's no guarantee with the Beatles, and I don't know what they're thinking now. So that's one of the reasons why I'm hanging on to that box set. Uh, not because I don't have other copies of these records, but it's because um, this is a stereo version that is 
pure analog that I think is special, you know? So let me know in the comments below if you saw any of these records that you thought maybe, maybe you should let some of these go, Melinda, or maybe you can name an example of something like this, uh, different reasons why you've let go of records. Uh, I'd be interested to hear the conversation from you. And I also want to mention one more thing. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, a video came out and I want, I'm going to send a link for it. It's for Concert Buddy, Chance. He did a really fun interview with me. He is excellent. He's a pro at doing interviews and I had a really good time discussing things with him. So he did an interview of me. I will leave a link below to that video. You can check out Concert Buddy and sub his channel. Watch the interview that I did with him. I thought it was a lot of fun and I think you would enjoy it too. So that is my video for this week. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, hit the like button and the notification bell and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.